art of living well and the art of dying well are one. Happiness means different things for different people, but most people have no idea what they are talking about when they talk about it. Some people tell us happiness is on the other side of a milestone, or that it will directly follow the purchase of their course, product, or self-help book. When most people give us advice on how to be happy, they usually just fill our head with things they want to be true, unknowingly using us as a means to prop up their own happiness by making us more like them. Our first task, if we are to ever get true happiness, is acquiring courage in the face of our mortality. We can't simply seek joy, distractions, and causes to follow, to have a false sense of everlasting bliss. Happiness is not perfection. It is moving through life with the mind of always getting better. You don't develop courage by being happy in your relationships every day. You develop it by surviving difficult times and challenging adversity. We already know that life is full of ups and downs, yet so many people try to find something that will somehow eliminate any unexpected events or difficulties. Some of the best feelings come after accomplishing difficult things, overcoming a setback, or changing our life in a way that we didn't think was possible. It doesn't mean we need to be out there grinding day in and day out just for the purpose of working hard. That is just to make another mistake, elevating hard work above what it is supposed to be for the purpose of. One who understands the limits of the good life knows that what eliminates the pains brought on by need and what makes the whole of life perfect is easily obtained, so there is no need for enterprises that entail the struggle for success. On the one hand, Epicurus might be selling us short of going after some really hard things, but to only take that away from this quote would be to miss the bigger point. There is nothing special about working hard for the sake of working hard, and there is no lasting happiness on the other side of riches attained without knowledge of who you are or what you want, just more pain, confusion, and wasted time. Success is attainable in overcoming ourselves, and it is already a monumental task itself, so stacking success over some made-up thing like job promotion, salary, and popularity will only drive you further from yourself. Instead of meaningless piles of possessions, we should focus on our relationships, particularly lifelong friendships, because it is true friends that empower us to be ourselves. They give us something to fall back on, but are also not afraid to tell things straight when we are screwing up. All friendship is desirable in itself, though it starts from the need of help. Life tends to present good things just as often as the bad. It's just much harder to notice. But when we are down and a friend comes in to help, this is truly one of the greatest moments of life. One that transcends any sports car or big check. It is not so much our friend's help that helps us, as the confident knowledge that they will help us. Thus, our most important lesson from Epicurus is that, of all the means to ensure happiness throughout the whole life, by far the most important is the acquisition of friends. Some people find such simplistic advice hard to take, especially when we are young. We want something difficult to be committed to. We want to go off and fight for our country or stand up for an idea we know is right. We want to commit ourselves to the betterment of the world in what way we can, but the world often throws these good intentions right back in our faces by teaching us the hard lesson that the world is not black and white. The harsh reality is that it takes years of understanding oneself, learning from mistakes, and practice to be better for others and better for ourselves. The Greeks didn't advocate for knowing thyself as a true virtue for no reason. It was the necessary predicate to any meaningful action in life. And it still is, even if no one teaches us this. This is why philosophy is so important. It doesn't box us into one field of study, try to squeeze productivity and labor out of us, or demand us to be any which way. The better one gets at philosophy, the better they get at all aspects of life. Because the practice of it requires us to put all of our prejudices aside and see ourselves without sugarcoating what we are and what we have done. And the same goes for the rest of the world. He who says either the time for philosophy has not yet come, or that it has passed, is like someone who says that the time for happiness has not yet come, or that it has passed. Our lesson here is twofold. On the one hand, we need to be doing far less to be happy. And on the other, once we have cut off the things that we were chasing for no reason, we can't be afraid to commit ourselves to what is most important. And only after the first step can we really know for sure what that is. 
So if you know yourself and you know what's important to you, don't be afraid of difficult things. Because the greater the difficulty, the more the glory in surmounting it.